Discuss the changes in nature from ionic to covalent, blah, blah, blah. All right then, so this is period three. That's the third row in the periodic table. And let me remind you that ionic bonding, well, that's normally between a metal and a non-metal. Metals tend to lose their valence electrons, they're electrophobic, and give them to the electrophilic non-metals. So that's ionic, if you remember, electron transfer. Now, since oxygen is a non-metal, and those three elements are metals, that must be ionic. So let me try and get you the formula of the oxides. I'll just put the symbol and oxygen. Now underneath are the oxidation numbers. If you don't know what that is, you've not done that chapter yet. But allow me to now pencil in the formula of the oxides of period three, the first three anyway. All right, so those are the three ionic ones. Let's look at covalent. Now, co means together, and valent means valence. So, like, together valence. So, these are non-metals, sharing electrons. Both, both non-metals love electrons. They're electrophilic, so they're probably going to share them. So, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine are going to be covalent with oxygen. Argon, well, that doesn't do any chemistry. It's a noble gas. The formula of those oxides aren't obvious, so you just have to learn them. And sulfur can actually have more than one, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide. And the others are arguable too, but that's the minimum you need to know. Silicon's a semi-metal, so is it going to donate electrons to oxygen or share them? You could check the difference in electronegativity to find out, but I'll tell you, it actually shares them. So silicon is going to share electrons with oxygen. It's not going to donate them. So that's also covalent. SiO2 is sand. How do you remember the pattern? Well, sulfur trioxide comes from power stations that are burning coal with sulfur in it. It blows away into clouds of water, which fall as acid rain. So I remember sulfur trioxide makes acid rain. Here's the question. Where's the best place for acid rain to fall? Silly answers include desert, on the enemy, or even in the sea. I'll give you the best answer after this. So that allows you to remember that the covalent or the non-metal oxides are acidic when you put them in water, because the sulfur one makes acid rain, and the ionic ones, conversely, are basic oxides. That also makes sense. Alkali metals, they're alkali oxides in water. So the one in the middle there, in terms of properties, is aluminium oxide, and that's amphoteric. It can behave in a basic or an acidic manner, depending on the conditions. So amphoteric means it's acidic and basic, the oxide, together. So the pattern is, is you get more acidic as you cross period three. But argon, that bucks the trend because it doesn't make an oxide. The IB wants you to know these four equations, the reaction of the oxides with water. So that has to make a base. What base sounds like sodium or sodium hydroxide, maybe you know that one. It's a strong base. Magnesium oxide, it's got to make hydroxide. So yes, that's going to be MgOH2. That's a weak base. To remember, uh, strong bases are group one hydroxide and barium hydroxide. That's the IB rule. What well, acid has phosphorus in it? It's got to be acidic. Well, phosphoric acid, H3PO4. And what acid has sulfur in it? Sulfury acid, sulfury acid, sulfuric acid. Now, you could argue that phosphoric acid is a strong or a medium acid. Uh, either of those is acceptable. But sulfuric acid is one of the strong acids you need to know. So where is the best place for acid rain to fall? In the chimney. Then you can dissolve it in water, make sulfuric acid, and sell it to make money. That's quite clever, isn't it? 